Welcome back friends. Now that we have seen how our user can place a single order, it is logical now for us to build a situation where the user can keep placing orders so long as he or she wants to, which means that we can allow the user to place any number of orders, uh, including repeated orders using a while loop. Now, before I get on with building this, let me just clarify what I mean by letting user proceed as many times as he or she wishes to. Uh, you know, so in my uh, this demonstration program, for example, when I uh, say when I run this, so I get a situation which says that enter one to five uh, to select a food item, six to check out. Now, let's say I say one, uh, which means I've selected milkshake because one is for milkshake. It asks me how many units do I wish to purchase. So I say, say for example, five. Next, you know, I can choose to say, uh, you know, maybe purchase something else. I say four. Um, maybe I say two units. Then I say, say five. Um, let's say I say, okay, maybe, you know, uh, say for example, three units. Now I can go back again to milkshake and say I want milkshake. And, you know, maybe I, this time I want four units. At some point, say I'm done with my shopping, I can say six. At which point I say proceed to checkout and I display the shopping cart. It says nine items of milk, nine units of milk because I think first time I ordered uh, five and then four, two units of eclairs, three units of cupcake and our total bill is whatever it is. Now we'll come to this part later, but the important bit that I wanted to convey is that our user got to order as many times as you know needed as say wanted by him because until the user decides to go to checkout, this piece of code that enter the you know one to five to select a food item, six to checkout, continued. Now this particular loop, this particular code has been done using a while loop and that's what we are going to look at. While loop is another important loop in Python, a very powerful loop in fact, where we can get something to repeat until a certain condition becomes false. Now why this becomes important in this context is because unlike a for loop, in this situation, we really do not know how long the user is going to be ordering. So, you know, like I said, user may order one time, user may order two times, user may in fact order 15 times, any number of times unless the user decides to proceed to check out. So while loop becomes quite a, a interesting usage here, what we can do is that we can set up a variable. So I'm going to set up a variable called say shopping uh, shopping complete and I'm just going to set this to zero and over here I'm going to say while say shopping shopping complete is equal to zero and what do I want to do is that while this is true I'm going to have to indent this line notice this particular line has to be indented so I bring it up here and give one indentation because just like the for loop I want for the while loop also indentation is required. In fact, indentation is everything. Now, if I did this, in fact, by doing this, we have created a situation where the user will always, okay, forever practically will keep on ordering. And that's because we are saying that while shopping complete is zero, keep repeating order. So, keep, so you know, keep taking the orders. For example, let's say I say three. It says again, enter one to five to select a food item. Let's say I answer five. Enter white one to five select a food item. I answer say two. Again, it asks me. In fact, I can enter anything and it will ask me by 87 also because it has not been told anything. It's doing exactly what we have ordered it to do. And we are basically putting this inside a while loop saying that till shopping complete is while shopping complete is equal to zero. Keep doing this, which means that at some point in the actual program, we must figure out that the shopping complete has to be set to one which means that the user had decided to move on to a checkout right now the, like i said earlier that we do not know how long the user wants to proceed and that's why we are having to give this option now really there are you know three scenarios that come up uh, assuming that the user has entered a valid input which can be converted to an integer as we saw in the last video if that is the case then we really have a th uh, you know say three scenarios we can say if order is less than equal to five, which is that user wants to purchase something, and the user what user wants to purchase really is the number. I mean, I mean the number is the item that the user wants to purchase. So for example, one is milkshake, two is ice cream, and so on and so forth. So now in this case, maybe we can just write, you know, say maybe user is shopping. Uh, you know, we'll come back to fill up all this a little later. Elif say order order is equal to six 
Now, in this case, what happens is that user wants to proceed to checkout. So we can just say, just for the sake of, you know, uh, displaying, let's say we can say proceeding to say check out. And finally, we can have an else condition where, you know, uh, we just say, okay, maybe this was an invalid input. Now, this has to be understood a bit carefully. Uh, we are talking of those inputs which could still be converted to an integer. Remember, if I gave an ABC, it's going to fail at this statement itself. It won't even come until here. However, if I gave, let's say, an input of 8, then certainly it will come here and it will go into this else and I'll get a print invalid input. Now, this alone is also not sufficient because you notice that if I just did this, for example, what's going to happen is that I am going to have to, I mean, this code is just going to keep repeating again and again. So I say, for example, one, it says, okay, user is shopping. Again, it asks me, I say, say five, user is shopping. If I enter six, even then, though it says proceed to checkout, but still comes and says, gives me this option, enter one to five to select, six to proceed to checkout. And the reason this is happening is, in fact, I can also enter, say, an invalid input. It does say invalid input, but it doesn't do anything beyond that. The reason that is happening is because, remember, this loop is going to keep running till this condition is true. So while shopping complete is zero, this loop is going to keep running, which means that when I want to exit this loop, I must set this shopping complete to, uh, you know, I must say the shopping complete to say equal to one. Uh, in fact, I can set it to anything else, which is not zero, but here I'll just make it one. And the moment I do this, notice what will happen is that, uh, you know, if I enter, for example, uh, so I run this again, so it says enter one to five to select food items. So let's say I say two. All right, user is shopping. I say four, still user is shopping. The moment I enter six, notice it says proceed to checkout. And in fact, the loop has been broken out because this became one and hence this while loop got over, which means the next code to execute will be anything that is not in the while loop. And again, how do you know, know what is in not in the while loop? Again, indentation. So notice that all these statements, whether it's order, whether it's this if, this elif, this else, they are all inside the while loop because they are one level indented from the, uh, you know, from the start of the while loop. So indentation, again, is playing a role, which means that my next statement, let's say I say, okay, print, uh, here I say, you know, let's say shopping uh, is say complete. And maybe I can say uh, displaying displaying say shopping cart now if i were to do this and i can just give an extra print over here uh, if i were to do this then what's going to happen is that you know if i enter say one to five to select so yes all right i say four user shopping i say two user shopping i say six it says proceeding to check out and notice i come shopping is complete displaying the shopping cart obviously that's not happening because we haven't yet given the code but what i want you to realize is that by doing the shopping complete equals to one, we have been able to break out of this while loop and move on to the next part of the code. This is actually quite powerful. It requires a little bit of practice. Before I wrap this up, I want to give you, uh, you know, take you down the memory lane sorts and give you a compare and contrast with a similar block in, uh, you know, uh, in um, Scratch, which is the repeat until block. Now remember, repeat until block is the block which will repeat a certain piece of code until this condition becomes true. The while loop is similar but not exactly the same because while this condition is true it will repeat this the moment condition becomes false it will in fact exit this. So for our case the condition of shop shopping complete equals to equal to zero. The moment I made shopping complete to one that condition broke and hence I exited the loop. Repeat until is in some sense reversed uh, you know the condition is false in the beginning but once it becomes true, we stop doing this. So keep repeating this until this becomes true. Here is keep repeating this until this becomes false. But barring this similar, let's say this similarity, the intent, the usage of these two is really quite similar. Um, I hope you found this useful. Take care. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.